Thousands of Israelis have taken to the streets in Tel Aviv and other cities to protest Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Many demonstrators have criticized his handling of the war in Gaza, and some have called for Netanyahu to step down. And they were joined by the families of hostages still being held by Hamas, uh, demanding that Netanyahu bring them home. The protest later descended into clashes with police. Now, Israel believes 130 hostages remain in Gaza, including more than 30 people who are presumed dead. Let's get across to Rebecca Ritters in Jerusalem for more. Rebecca, thousands of Israelis turned out to take part here. Can you tell us how these protests compare to previous demonstrations that we've seen in Tel Aviv? Yeah, Claire, it's, uh, there's no official figure of how many were in attendance last night, but some media reports saying tens of thousands and protest organi organisers saying some 50,000 people were out on the streets in Tel Aviv. These are certainly starting to resemble some of the bigger anti-government demonstrations we were seeing in the lead-up last year, in the lead-up to the war. Uh, that was against, of course plans to overhaul the judiciary. They then stopped when the war broke out and uh, we, we've been seeing much smaller anti government protests continue, though the attention turning to the government's handling of the hostage situation, as you were mentioning there. But what we were seeing, uh, what we see, saw certainly last night and, and really in the last couple of weeks is a change in flavour or fervour of these protests, if you will. We're starting to see them become more angry and more aggressive. Uh, you mentioned there that there were scuffles that broke out. People uh, were, were on the highway trying to block the major highway in and out of Tel Aviv. There were bonfires lit and police used water cannon and sound cannon to try to break up those protesters. Uh, now, what we're also seeing, as well as a change in fervour, is uh, the merging of two separate protests. Uh, and one, of course, being that anti-government protest, I speak of, but there have been weekly rallies uh, a vid that started out as a kind of a vigil, if you will, for the hostages uh, in support of them. We've been seeing that happen uh, since the beginning, really since the first week uh, that they were taken. And that is now moving into to join this anti-government protest. So it's growing in size. We saw some of the hostage families last night saying, this rally is not going to continue this vigil. We're going to take to the streets. And we saw one spokesperson for the families tweet, these rallies are over, the protests have begun. So we can potentially uh, expect to see these grow and, and change in form. We are expecting protests here in Jerusalem starting this evening, continuing for some days outside the Knesset, and they promise to be even bigger than the ones we've been seeing in Tel Aviv. And Rebecca, uh, we have an Egyptian media report suggesting that talks aimed at brokering a truce between Israel and Hamas are set to resume today in Cairo. Can you tell us what we can expect from the Israeli side there? Yeah, we saw those reports yesterday. That's been confirmed now by the Prime Minister's office that uh, a delegation is being sent. That delegation tasked with uh, trying to move these talks forward. The government obviously under increased pressure, as we were just talking about now, 177 days after the hostages uh, were taken. They're becoming under increased pressure to, to get some kind of a deal. We've been seeing these talks ongoing uh, for months now, uh, since the last breakthrough where we saw more than 100 hostages released in November, but we've had no success in the talk so far. They call them rounds, but it's really been one continuing discussion. And, you know, it's beginning again uh, in, uh, in Egypt today. Uh, Egypt playing a major role in those discussions, as well as Qatar, the US, uh, and of course, teams uh, from, both, from both sides. But, you know, both sides still having just far too a, a gap in between, not being able to, to reach an agreement. Hamas demanding for a permanent ceasefire, full withdrawal of Israeli troops and, and for people to be allowed to go back from the south into northern Gaza. That's something that Israel are unwilling or unable to agree to. They say that that is tantamount to defeat and they will not be able to meet their military aims of defeating Hamas. They say that more military pressure is needed on Hamas in order for them to be able to get the hostages back. So you're seeing two sides really unable to come to an agreement. I think it's unlikely that we'll see anything firm come out of these talks. Of course, there's always hope. But as I say, these two sides are still very, very far apart. Rebecca, thank you. That is DW's correspondent, Rebecca Ritters in Jerusalem for us. 
The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has condemned an explosion in Lebanon on Saturday, saying that the UN peacekeeping mission's security must be guaranteed at all times. The UN says it's investigating a blast from a shell that struck near the town of Ramish, close to the border with Israel. Three UNIFIL observers and a translator were injured. Israel and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah have been exchanging fire across the border nearly every day since October. Our bureau chief in Beirut, Mohamed Shreita, told us more about the rising tensions between Israel and Lebanon. Hezbollah have been uh, firing uh, heavy rockets into uh, new Israeli uh, uh, territory and, and positions. And in return, Israel have been uh, targeting uh, and widening its, its targets inside uh, Lebanon, uh, reaching uh, the Bekaa Valley and Baalbek, which is relatively uh, far from the uh, northern, from its northern border. And this is a clear extension of the uh, usual rule of uh, engagement between both uh, uh, parties. Now, there's a growing fear among uh, Lebanese from a large-scale war. Most of people we talk to are very concerned about a war that uh, the country is far from ready uh, uh, for uh, on the uh, financial, logistical, and, and also uh, the uh, mental aspect. The country is going through the worst economic and financial uh, crisis in uh, Lebanon's modern history and barely uh, functioning uh, uh, like the, the UN, the, the um, uh, government organizations is uh, barely able to uh, uh, support the uh, uh, citizens in Lebanon.